Running Touch, welcome to Live on the Lot. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Now, I understand Equalizer has sort of a, it's, it's been a bit of a, a slow road to fruition and was it a demo to begin with or it was sort of sitting somewhere in hiatus for a while? Yeah, um, so a lot of the focus this year was um, kind of like cultivating demos and I was putting some of those demos through my Instagram just in like little excerpts and that was originally a song that's still on my Instagram called A Thousand Years. It was just like a little shoddy song, um, like an ad lib bass song. And then I pulled that up like six months later because I didn't use that. And it sounds nothing like that now. So if you compared the two, there would no, be no correlation or anything like that. But yeah, I don't know why that song just turned to be like, it got terraformed, it, but it served as the basis. And so when you sort of dragged it back out and brought it to life and, and, and sort of reworked it, I have to ask you about the bass track because before I listened to it, and I, I was mentioning to a friend that I was uh, um, going to you know, sit down with you today, someone told me about the bass track, and when I listened to it, um, it's really, really catchy, and it's sort of like impregnated. Thank you. Impregnated itself yeah. in my brain. Um, was that there to begin with, or was that the sort of did that come in phase two? Yeah, that came in. That came in like phase ten, to be honest with yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> um, it was. Yeah, it it came in many forms. That song. Um, it was originally kind of like a houseier track, and then kind of got injected with the singing and then that kind of enabled like more of a chorus which like was the bass line but yeah I'm just you know I'm really into um, kind of what Pharrell and guys like Kevin Parker are doing and what they do with bass lines like I've always been um, huge admirers of those guys and so you know I just wanted to kind of try my hand at that. So most people you know know you as a DJ and a producer but you are a multi-instrumentalist so with the bass track did you play that yourself? Yeah so that's actually um most of it's actually just my um, my Gibson at home, and I just track it and then I uh, pitch it down. So it's actually a guitar; it's not even a bass guitar. So. Awesome. And then I just layered it. So yeah, the whole thing is pretty much yeah, just electric guitar, just manipulated. So critics often describe you as someone who blends you know electronica and indie pop, and you know before this getting on Dr. Google, I, s I saw that popping up a lot. Yeah, sure. Mate, how, how do you describe your music, or do you can, do you put can you put tags on your music, or do you like to put tags on music? Um, I suppose music now you don't really have to, and people I think a lot of the Gen Y people refuse to do that as well um, with the era of streaming. Um, but no, I think it's just a testament to the project and the project's name, like Running Touch. You know, that's kind of like where the, a lot of the name birth from, just kind of like running from genre to genre. And I think again, um, being part of something like Ocean Grove, that kind of um, pushes me to um, kind of pursue different genres within one project and although you know a lot of people probably um, don't like the genre hopping because you know they want a consistent basis from your artist yeah it's just honestly it was so natural and it's so organic I think it just became part of the project so I, I, I would definitely say um, uh, I, I just label it as more so um, the artist, and I'd put the label to the artist, like Running Touch is, is more so just like a bipolar project in itself and a testament to like where I'm at in my life. Stepping out of Ocean Grove for a little while and, and into Running Touch, um, you know, if you are taking a few more risks with Running Touch, because you know, from what I've read that um, you know, people are talking about how you're really experimenting and breaking the rules and pushing the boundaries, um, where does that come from? you know, within you personally or, you know, are you finding it easy to do it sort of, you know, in your capacity as running touch? That's a good question. Um, I think it's just because uh, in music, I think I'm definitely um, more by default a producer than anything. And I think that's um, the performer thing just kind of was just completely like serendipitous. It kind of just fell into itself. Um, but yeah, I think just the drive to want to be a producer more than anything and my love for producing different kind of musics and I think that stems for just like having so much admiration for my idols who are in music you know I want to be like so many different people at the same time that you know that kind of like enlightens me to try and you know pursue the music that they create as well so I, I think yeah it's just it's just that want to be a producer more than anything and, and um, a producer in um, different genres and kind of like you know pay my respects to my idols I guess. So in terms of working on different areas of, of, of being an artist you know in your, in, in your capacity as a musician um, your gigs have a, 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 a you know really great reputation and, and you do for 
um, b being able to bring an audience together and make everyone feel connected. How important uh, is that for you, you know, in your capacity as running touch? Yeah, insanely important. I think uh, I was extremely lucky to be exposed to a scene other than the one I'm in at the moment with Ocean Grove because I started out in a band and it's just such a polarising scene, um, live scene and professional scene. Um, and I think that just kind of um, gave me a different kind of like scope into the scene and way to pursue um, a live show um, and the way I treat it. Um, so it's like the hardcore scene is like quite manic. It's quite like, you know, inclusive. It's not very standoffish at all. It's not, there's no like quirks or like um, that kind of like beautiful awkwardness a lot of artists have. Like it's pretty, like the hardcore scene's like in your face, you know, you're, you're kind of like unleashing the hatred on yourself. So it's kind of like lacing that in with that kind of like beautiful awkwardness that a lot of artists have in this scene. And like, I think a lot of people expect one thing from me and my music, because like a lot of the music's quite, you know, laid back, but you get this like, you know, oh, like semi punk show and punk people will probably hate me for saying that. But that's, 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 that's honestly what I'm going for. Yeah, trying to bring that mani manic reputation to this. I remember the actual show where I started to like feel free, move around, start like, you know, stomping the ground and like, then started flying. yeah, like that literally taught me to like, just not care. And then the first show I had as Running Touch, I just honestly, I just didn't think, I didn't, didn't care. Give a fuck I just, just really up. didn't care. Like I'd, I'd, I'd honestly kicked the shit for so long <laughs> that, you know, I, I was happy and covered in it and just, you know, happy to keep going. You know, before we sat down, we had a, you know, spoke about the the artwork for Equalizer and had a you know quick look at the music video that's coming out. Um, so I understand you were pretty involved in 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 both of those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I've always kind of been surrounded by people who are in different mediums um, who have kind of like uh, inspired me very much, like people who have inspired me for music, like videographers and. Um, people who like designers anything like that like anyone who's ever kind of been associated with any act I've been in and done those things I've always been like really fascinated with how they do it and so you know I, I thought by trying to put myself in what they do but associated with the act I'm in kind of will help me be better part of that project what it means obviously learning a new skill is fantastic as well um, but yeah I, I just think that kind of representing your message and your art in different mediums is, is something that can make your vision a lot more accurate and your vision a lot more accessible to people. And um, yeah, more than anything, I just honestly really, really enjoy sitting behind a computer and editing a video and um, editing art and making art just as much as I do music. Um, it's just, it's honestly just another hobby more than anything. Like there's, there's honestly not too much to it. I just really enjoy doing it. And the, uh the Riverdale Netflix uh, sync. You know, we're here at Fox Studio, so I have to ask you about that one. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? I have absolutely no idea, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, just by the, yeah, the just, grace of God? Yeah, grace of God. Complete chance. Um, yeah, I think it just honestly was the right aesthetic for the right time. Um, watching the show does fit in really nicely. Um, it Has it led to any uh, you know, other opportunities, or are there people sort of, have other people reached out to you in that You know capacity? what, I think it probably has and will. Um, even if it hasn't, I mean, it's it's still a great opportunity nonetheless. It's been it, it's a great great accolade to have, and I suppose it made because I actually um, I, I did watch the show and I do watch the show, so it kind of made it exciting, you know, like sitting there and like hearing it. And mate, lastly, um, we're coming to the end of the year, and you know, in summer in Australia, so tour dates, festivals, gigs. What's uh, what's the, the next six months got planned for you? Um, so the next six months is quite interesting. Obviously a lot of um, content creation, like we've got plenty of music to, to come out. A lot of things with Ocean Grove are happening as well. Obviously things like the music video and just like uh, kind of still promoting the new single and working with things around that and um, plenty, plenty of creation. And uh, over the new years we have a few shows. Um, there's New Year's in the Park in Sydney. Mm -hmm. There's Beyond the Valley. I'll be in Fiji. Um, and is that that's all on your your website? Yeah, yeah, all on the Facebook page. So if you wanna if you wanna catch me anywhere, go to the, the Running Touch Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, suss it out, suss it out. Um, my page on Facebook, it's all there. Um, but yeah, the New Year's should be really special. Um, my birthday's on actually on the first of January. So yeah, well, <laughs> this period's always like you'll go straight through. Yeah, it's always <laughs> just like I don't know. It just it feels like um, 
like that bulb at the end of the year like yeah. it's just so there's just so much going on and that's kind of like the cap on it yeah so it makes like it's like the, t the knot at the it's end you kind of like tie it off yeah so it's it's really fun well, running touch thanks for coming on live on the lot thank you so much man thanks mate cheers